Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's session. I hope each one of you had a great weekend. So, Sid, did you have a good weekend? Yes, ma'am. I had a really good weekend. We missed you last class, Sid. What happened? Actually, ma'am, I was going through a sickness in in Delhi. There is a very severe cold and climate change. Okay, okay, okay. So, how are you feeling now? Now I am completely fine, ma'am. Oh yes, we can see that you are refreshed and strong. Good, God bless. Thank you, and I am glad to know that you are recovered and doing better. Okay, um, yeah, this session has been recorded. So even before we could start with our session, can I request one of us to please lead us in prayer? Sid, can you lead us in prayer? Yes, ma'am. Come, let's pray. Father, we come to the throne of grace, Lord. Thank you for the day you have given us, Lord. Whatever we are going to learn from your New Testament, Lord, your living word, let Lord, this is not just a word, but Lord, every word in this Bible is truth, Lord, is going to happen and it has happened, Lord. The word we are going to learn, Lord, it should be not just kept in our heart, but Lord, the prophecy, the promise you have done in the Bible, Lord, let should be come to life and Lord, it should be fulfilled in our hearts, Lord, in our daily life. Lord, thank you for this hour, but what we are going to spend learning about your word, Lord, that it should be not be wasted, but it should be become a tree, Lord, a full fruit for every green tree lord thank you for this day thank you for this hour thank you for all the students and the teacher lord in jesus name we pray amen, amen. amen. thank you so much give me a minute i connect my headset So today we're going to study on the third book of the New Testament, that is the Gospel of Luke. Okay, so can we turn our Bible to the Gospel of Luke? So how many chapters are there in this Gospel? 24. 24 chapters. And who's the author of this book? Anyone? The, the doctor class? professor himself. The doctor, professor himself, Dr. Himself Luke. Luke. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Thank you so much. So um, uh, so far, uh, we have covered two Gospels. That is the Gospel of Matthew and Gospel of Mark. So what did uh, the Gospel of Matthew portray Jesus has? And what did Mark portray gospel, uh, Jesus has? Anyone from the class? Make a note. Please make a note so that, you know, the more we repeat this in every class, so we remember them better. Matthew portrayed Jesus as the king. And Mark portrayed Jesus as the servant, the humble servant. And we'll see Luke portraying Jesus as the man. The way they introduced Jesus as Matthew uh, introduced, behold your king. And Mark said, behold your servant. And here we see Luke saying, behold the man. And we also see uh, uh, the characteristics of uh, resemblance of the, uh, uh, you know, in each book as uh, Matthew portrays as the king and Mark as the prophet and Luke as a priest. And also we see uh, this; these books are written to a different set of audience. So whom did Matthew write to? The Jews. Yes, you're right. And Mark? Mark wrote to the Romans. And we are going to see Luke writing to the Greeks. Okay, let's remember. Matthew wrote to Jews. Mark, the audience was a Roman. Can we remember that? Matthew to Jews, Mark to Romans, and Luke to the audience of Greeks. 
okay so with this uh, uh, you know we can move on to study the gospel of luke so we see the author the author of this book is luke where he, he portrays jesus as the perfect man so what do we know about this author he is the only gentile writer of the bible Exactly, Lubega. Thank you. Anyone else? Anyone else? What do we know about Luke? His background. I say he was a physician, a doctor. Yes, a well-learned man, right? Anyone else would like to add to it? Okay, apart from Luke being a physician, uh, uh, a doctor, or a well-learned man, he was also, uh, yes, a Gentile, uh, the only Gentile who has written a book, a Gospel of Luke. And he was also a traveling companion to Paul whenever Paul visited uh, near Philippi, the hometown Okay, of uh, Luke. He was traveling with Paul. And uh, there's little bit controversy over the facts that the author of this book was Luke. This can be clearly demonstrated when they read the book of Acts. So when, the, uh, when we read the Gospel of Luke and when we read the uh, uh, book of Acts, both are very similar. And when uh, we can make sure the author is Luke when we read through the book of Acts. It clears. The scholar says clearly it has been identified the author of the gospel of Luke and the book of Acts is Luke. And yes, Luke being a learned man, the writing style also adds as an advantage for him. You know, a lot of technical words, uh, the way he, he, the style of his writing is seem to be very good. A lot of medical languages he used and, you know, the technical vocabulary carries, uh, uh, makes this book a very uh, well-learned, uh, very well-written uh, book. So we see there are about 50 common words uh, in these two books, that is in the book of Luke and in the book of Acts. And Luke was a, a a uh, man of compassion. Uh, he, he was a very good intimate friend of Paul. And uh, yes, we know Paul was also a learned man. So they both uh, made a good companion. They both uh, shared a lot of learnings and a lot of interests. So they made a good friendship. And, uh, you know, they were good uh, friends with each other. So Luke traveled with Paul most of the time for his uh, journey, especially in the second missionary journey. He traveled whenever Paul visited his hometown or very uh, close places to Philippi. So Philippi was a hometown of Luke. Uh, with that, we also see uh, a little bit of Luke's background. He was born in Antioch of Syria, uh, at least where his parents decided and he was not a Jew he was a Greek in, from his background and he was the only Gentile who wrote the book and he was well educated in science of medicine and yes uh, yeah he was possibly uh, he was actually ministered by Paul and later his life was transformed and because of his transformation uh, and the intimate uh, fellowship with Jesus, he started supporting Paul in the ministry. And uh, he, though Luke was not an eyewitness uh, of Jesus, of Christ in his earthly ministry, but then the words that Paul shared touched him and transformed his life where he was converted. And then we also see that, uh, you know, um, he traveling to many places and he was also uh, 
Well, uh, Luke was also part uh, with Paul in his last missionary journey when he was traveling to Rome. He was also part of that shipwreck journey and uh, many other hardships along with Paul. He has witnessed himself. So he, it was easy for him to document it clearly in the book. And he was uh, he was a, uh, he was a trained and discipled by Paul in the ministry. Um, yeah, this is what we see uh, the background of Luke. We also see that the uh, the scholars say that he was never married. He was not married because there's no other information about him. And uh, yeah, they believe that he would have had a natural cause of death in the place called Bithynia. But then, uh, yeah, some other people say maybe he was martyred at the age of 80, but there's no fact, no proven fact like he was martyred. So the scholars go ahead saying that uh, he may have had a natural death. So this book was written. The Gospel of Luke was written in uh, 59 to 63 AD. And this book was written to the Greek to the Greek audience. So the Gospel of Luke is especially, specifically to a person by the name Theophilus. Now, who is this Theophilus? Because it has been addressed. When we see uh, the first chapter, we see in verse 3, he says, I write, I write to you an orderly account, most excellent Theophilus. The very, uh, the writing itself shows an addressing to a Roman official, such as a governor, because most excellent has been addressed to some officials. Yes, I see Lubega hand been raised. You would like to I've add? Withdrawn. To I have just withdrawn my hand, Pastor. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you want to share about the Roman official of Theophilus? Yeah, I think okay. Luke, as a book, was written as a defense. You see, both both the first and the second Luke, because we know Luke 1 is the gospel and Luke 2 is the acts. So they were all written as defense uh, in, in defense of Jesus Christ in the first place, and the second one was in the defense of uh, Paul. Okay. Okay. Good. Thank you. Thank you, Lubega, for adding that. Yes, it was written as a defense. Well, um, now we were talking about the Theophilus, a uh, Roman official. Now, what is the background of him? Who is he? He was a person who was a Roman official standing in the influence, who was sought by Paul's trial as well. And uh, he was a magistrate who was due to hear Paul's case when we read the book of Acts we will get to know more about that and he was also a person of nobility who was the uh, patron of Luke and who founded the production of this book some of the scholars say that he supported him to produce this gospel of Luke well the gospel of Luke was written in a general sense to the Greek world uh, we see that the greek were uh, those people who pursued an idea of the perfect man so we study uh, luke the gospel of luke as uh, written focusing on the art uh, religion literature and it is so obviously seen when we read through this book and we also see there's an idle man not as same as the official uh, uh, Roman officials. But then the idle man here we see uh, denoting at Jesus, the man of beauty, the man of wisdom who carried his ministry with a lot of grace. We also see that though Luke was a Greek, um, he, 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 he concentrated to write this book as a Gentile writer and to a, uh, he, he wrote this book so that anyone the Greek or the other audience from the world, when they read, they could understand the man, uh, Jesus as the perfect man. And uh, yes, Luke traveled and he spent a lot of his time after encountering Jesus. He spent a lot of time with Paul. 
in the ministry, specifically among the Greek world, because we also see that Paul had this passion to uh, to share the gospel to the Gentiles. And here we see two like-minded people joining together and heading toward the ministry. So uh, what is the purpose of this book? Can anyone say? What is the purpose of this book? Can one of us read Luke chapter 1, verse 1 to 4? Luke chapter 1, verses 1 to 4. Many have undertaken to, to draw up an account of things that have been fulfilled among us, just as they have handed, handed down to us those who from the first were eyewitnesses and servants of the word. Therefore, since I myself have carefully investigated everything from the beginning, it seemed good also to me to write an orderly account for you, most excellent Theophysus, so that you may know the certainty of the things you have been taught. Amen. Thank you. So uh, here we see Luke uh, unfolding two purpose. That is to set forth a well-researched and an orderly account of the life of Christ. The second point we see is to strengthen the faith of the believers in Jesus with an affirmation of the faith rested on the solid historical facts. So with that purpose, so what are the things that mark this book as the perfect man or denotes Jesus as the perfect man? Well, we see uh, Luke is writing to the Greek world uh, and portraying Jesus as the perfect and the ideal man. First, we see that the genealogy of Jesus. In Luke chapter 3, verse 38, Luke chapter 3, can we turn to Luke chapter 3, verse 38? See, we see from 23, Luke chapter 3, verse 23 to 38, we see the genealogy, uh, genealogy back to the first Adam. And then the second point, we see that the emphasis uh, is on Jesus as a normal human experience where the gospel of uh, Luke gives us the fullest description of uh, Jesus' birth, his infant, his childhood and the human development, how we had not only about Jesus, Luke also describes about John the Baptist and Jesus' infancy, which no other gospel has been shared. We also see uh, Luke portraying Jesus as an humble human birth, like in Luke chapter 2, verse 6 to 7. Can I request one of us to read Luke chapter 2, verse 6 to 7? While they were there, the days were completed for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and she wrapped him in clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. The inn. So as we read this, you know, with a clear, detailed uh, information, Luke is portraying how Jesus was born. Even when we read about John the Baptist, he also says how John the Baptist was conceived and how he was born. Uh, uh, you know, uh, what happened when uh, um, uh, Elizabeth and Mary together, when they met the song, the beautiful song. We'll come to that later. But then here in this verse, we see that uh, the humility and the human birth of Jesus. Can I request one of us to turn to Luke chapter 2, verse 40? Luke the child continued to grow and become strong, increasing in wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Amen. So here we see the natural human, the childhood of Jesus, how? 
you know, the child grew. Your Luke writes, the child grew and became strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. You know, he, he, he shows the human childhood, how Jesus grew. And third, can I request one of, the, one of us to read verse 49, same chapter, verse 49. Luke chapter 2, verses 49. Why were you hoping for me? He asked, didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? In my father's business, some of the virgin says father's business. When we read from 46 to 50, we understand that how Jesus was reasoning in the temple. And look at the hunger for the knowledge. So as a man, he was growing. He was reasoning. We see that. And can I request one of us to read verse 51 from the same chapter? Or 52 also. 51 and 52. I can go. Yes, please, um, Joy. Jesus went back to Nazareth with his parents and obeyed them. His mother kept on thinking about all that had happened. Jesus became wise and he grew and he grew strong. God was pleased with him and so were the people. So here we see his subjection, his uh, obedience, his submission to his human parents. And we see uh, him gradually develop into a full manhood. He developed intellectually, that is in wisdom, the verse talks about, the last verse, 52, talks about that how <clears throat> Jesus developed intellectually in wisdom. And he also developed physically in stature. And he developed spiritually, that is, in favor of God. And he developed socially with favor, favor with man. Favor with God and favor with man. Well, uh, we also see in uh, Luke chapter 3, verse 23. Can I request one of us to read? Luke chapter 3, verses 23. Now, Jesus himself was about 30 years old when he began his ministry. He was, he was the son, so it was thought of Joseph. Thanks. So here we see Luke mentioning Jesus himself began his ministry at about 30 years of age. At 30 years of age. So here we see the uh, fully grown Jesus, okay, at the age of 30. And this is only mentioned in the Gospel of Luke and not in the other Gospels. And with that, we also see that how Luke portrays Jesus as man of prayer. So more than any other gospel, he, focus, he, he portrays Jesus saying that he was a man of prayer and he focused on that. Can I request one of us to turn to Luke chapter 3 verse 21? Luke chapter 3 verses 21. When all the people were being baptized, Jesus was baptized too. And he was praying, heaven was opened. Yes, we see uh, heaven was open at the time of Jesus' baptism. We also see after the day of miracles in chapter 5, verse 15 and 16. Can I request one of us to turn to chapter 5, verse 15 and 16? Chapter 5, verses 15 and 16. Yet the news about him spread all the more. So the crowd of the people came to hear him and to be healed of his sickness, of their sicknesses. But Jesus often withdrew to lonely place and place and prayed. Yes, we saw how Jesus withdrew himself. He took time to pray. He took time to pray. So that means what? Prayer was a very, uh, very vital in the life of Jesus, very important in the life of Jesus. So it should be for us. If it was important for Jesus himself, how much more important it should be in our life. We also see in chapter 6, verse 12. 
chapter 6 verse 12. Can I request one of us to please turn to chapter 6 verse 12? Now it came to pass in those days he went out to the mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God. Thank you. So when we look at 12 and 13 in continuation, we see that uh, Jesus prayed even before he could start choosing the 12 disciples. You know, in chapter 9, verse 18, we see even before the first prediction of his passion, he prayed. And uh, chapter 11, verse 1. Can I request Luke chapter 11, verse 1? Can I request anyone, any of us to please turn to chapter 11, verse 1? And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. Amen. And we see how Jesus taught them uh, the model prayer of our Father who art in heaven. So here we see again, Jesus teaching the model prayer. Prayer was very important. Even at the transfiguration, we see there was a prayer. Prayer for Peter. Um, you know, when Peter was tempted, Jesus saying, Take heed, Peter, I have prayed for you. And we also see, even before um, he was been arrested by the Roman soldiers, we see Jesus getting into the Garden of Gethsemane. And what did he do? He prayed. He prayed there. And very well, uh, Luke narrates uh, the whole atmosphere, like how Jesus, uh, he sweat, his sweat was as similar to the blood. And look at the tension that Jesus went through at that time and how he was comforted by the angels. You know, Luke records all this clearly. And how Jesus prayed on the cross in Luke 23, 34, we see how Jesus prayed. Even at the time of his death, Jesus prayed. And we also see the, uh, there are other things that Luke focuses on Jesus' ministry. That is, uh, Luke focuses on Jesus' need to eat as a human, as a man. He was hungry. He was thirsty. You know, uh, he sat near the uh, well of Jacob to meet the Samaritan woman, and he said, I'm thirsty. Can I get some water? As a man, he was tired walking from place to place. He was tired. So Jesus sat. You know, the emphasis as Jesus has been a fully man. You know, Luke portrays very clearly in that. And also Luke emphasizes on empowering of the ministry of the Holy Spirit in the individuals, including Jesus, in this gospel. He also showcases that Jesus was a, uh, 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 had a good uh, uh, relationship with people. He was compassionate over people. Yes, we also see that Matthew been writing, like whenever Jesus moved with compassion, uh, there was a miracle among the people. And here we also see Luke recording that he emphasizes that Jesus was filled with compassion for people. We also see Luke depicting of the angel ministering to Jesus at the Garden of Gethsemane. We also see how um, uh, Luke uh, portrays or uh, emphasizes on Jesus agonizing in the Garden of Get Gethsemane, as I just said about the sweat, drops of blood. We also see that Luke records the centurion's declaration. You know, when Jesus was at the cross, it's a centurion, the Roman guard, who declared, saying, Jesus as the righteous man. We see that in Luke chapter 23, verse 47. Can I request one of us to please turn to Luke 23, 47, please? Luke 
Luke chapter 23 verses 47 the centurion seeing what had happened praised God and said surely this was a righteous man see the centurion has been declaring that this was a righteous man and we also see Luke record Jesus commending his spirit to the father father I commend my spirit into your hand we also see Luke records some of the distinct features in this book so um, yes in times of uh, the volume of text Luke stands out so only Luke records the four songs that became part of the liturgy of the historic church that is the Magnificat the song of Mary which is recorded in Luke chapter 1 so these Luke chapter 1 and 2 has many songs, but the song of Mary is recorded in Luke chapter 1, verse 39 to 45. Okay, we don't have time, but then you can make a note in your Bible saying that there's a magnifica, the song of Mary that she sang, you know, uh, she sang uh, when she met Elizabeth. And then uh, in reply, we also see the Benedictius or the Song of Zechariah. That is from Luke chapter 1, verse 67 to 79. The third song we see is the Gloria in Excelsis. Or it is also known as the Song of Angels. It is in chapter 2, verse 13. 13 and 14, where the angels sing glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. And in Luke chapter 2, verse 28 to 32, Luke chapter 2, verse 28 to 32 is the fourth song, the nun Demetrius or the song of Simeon, when he saw the Messiah, when he saw the Messiah, this song was birthed in Simeon. So Luke very clearly, um, you know, has uh, recorded all these four songs. And we also see uh, a higher emphasis on the women. Luke has uh, shared many emphasis on the women, poor children in his book. Uh, one of them is, I'll just get the scriptures for you. Just give me a minute. Yes. We see that Luke has mentioned about 13 women. 13 women. And uh, it is not mentioned elsewhere in the other gospel. But then he shows particular interest about including the story of uh, immoral women. The women who supported with the gifts for the ministry. We also see when... Uh, Jesus was carrying the cross and walking to the Mount Calvary. We see uh, the women weeping, lamenting over him on the way of the cross. And we also see women, uh, very, uh, very uh, prominent figure. He's been uh, writing it about them. Uh, the story, like after the death at the, uh, at the tomb, you know, Mary Magdalene who came there. No, very clearly even mentioning about the importance of prominence for the women is given in this gospel. And all these speak about um, the gentle service of women to the society and to God and how passionately they were following Jesus. And also we see Jesus was also interested in the children. And uh, uh, Luke portrays that, how the childhood, um, you know, uh, uh, Jesus showed interest over the children. He's, he told the disciples, do not hold the children from coming to me. And he also, uh, this is the only gospel where uh, the childhood, the infancy of John the Baptist and Jesus is also mentioned. We also see Luke uh, uh, clearly portrays the social relationship that Jesus had with different people uh, at that time. That is with the Pharisees and uh, with, uh, with uh, Zacchaeus. Uh, these people were actually the outcast people you know, with the sinners, 
um, he had with the prostitutes, um, uh, many other people who, who, were, uh, who were betrayed, who were outcast, who considered to be the outcast with those people. But then Jesus, uh, you know, he, he did not hold himself from being with them, tax collectors. He made a relationship with them. He treated everyone equal. And he also uh, shows that how he had the social relationship with, you know, by many uh, parables like the lost coin, the merry making at the return of the prodigal son or the innkeeper tending the wound. You know, the social relationship what people can have through many parables. Luke was also interested in the theology. So uh, in the theology, so he also presented Jesus Christ as a savior of the world that is savior to the lost sinners he also showed that how the samaritans uh, they uh, samaritans hated jews they were completely opposite of each other they hated so much but then here jesus come comes and he says listen um, the universalism is portrayed like you know uh, i die for both i need both samaritans and jews are on the same level ground so he emphasized on the universal blessing is based for everyone. And uh, Luke also portrays saying that, you know, there's a very evangelistic uh, uh, letter we could also say by saying that the day of salvation is near. Uh, he emphasizes on the word called now and today. You know, there's more focus on now and today. So when we read the gospel, we see there's a, the day of salvation is near. So we need to accept Jesus as a Lord and Savior because it's only through him we can receive this free gift of salvation. And we also see the joy of salvation gospel has been uh, shared in this book. There's a lot of gladness, joy, the word called rejoicing occurs 21 times more than any other gospel. And also, as I said, the four songs has been recorded only in the Gospel of Luke. And also Luke is interested on the poor and the oppressed. Luke records on uh, seven of his parables, either concerns about the poverty, the wealth, or the economic need of the people who were living there at that time. So he records all this and he also pays attention to the praise and the glory of God through the song of uh, what Mary praised and Zechariah and the uh, angels, how they were glad and praising, uh, praising the birth of Jesus to the shepherd, announcing the good news to the shepherds and how shepherds praised, how Simeon at the very uh, sight of carrying the baby Jesus as he, he, he had the revelation of he is the son of God, he is the Messiah and the way he praised God, all has been clearly uh, recorded in this gospel. And yeah. Yeah, we also see in the gospel of Luke, a lot of contrast. Uh, he, 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 because he's a learned man, uh, the way the, he has written uh, brings a lot of understanding, a lot of revelation, a lot of insight in this book. Like uh, he brings a contrast uh, between, uh, uh, yes, even when he shares the parable, like, uh, you know, he brings a, 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 a contrast in the parable or um, explaining a situation, explaining people, the two types of people. There's always a contrast that is between the rich and the poor, uh, uh, between Jesus Christ and the John the Baptist when he wrote about them. We see uh, even when he's narrating the story of how Mary and Martha, like Jesus, how, uh, uh, you know, how hospitable they were when Jesus came to the home. The issues, a different character of Mary and Martha. Uh, the characteristics of Pharisees and the publican. We also see the rich man and the Lazarus. We also see Peter and Judas. And lastly, we also see the two thieves on the cross. The difference between the two thieves. One mocks Jesus and one says, one receives Jesus as the savior and he's asking him if you can remember me on the paradise. So 
there is always a contrast and this gives us a clear picture of different type of people who lived in that season and uh, there's a key verse. Can we turn to the key verse in this book? Luke chapter 19, verse 10. Luke chapter Luke. 19, verse 10. Yes. Luke chapter 19, verse 10. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save what was lost. Amen. So the Son of Man has come to seek and to save which was lost. So this is the key verse, the ultimate message that the Son of Man, here Luke portraying Jesus as the Son of Man. He has come to seek and to save that which was lost. That which was lost. He has come to seek and save us from this world. We also see uh, the book of uh, the Gospel of Luke being compared with other gospel, that is with the Gospel of Matthew. Matthew is a gospel of sad rejection of Jesus as the Messiah, but then Luke portrays it as glad acceptance of Jesus as the Son of Man. When we compare the three gospels, that is Matthew, Mark and John, Luke contains the most complete account of Jesus' uh, family background, the birth and the childhood. Also, uh, some of the scholars say Luke would have been the author of the book of Hebrew. So along because of the writing style, it's not proved, but then they just consider because of the writing style, he was a learned man, he wrote the gospel of Luke, Acts, he may have written Hebrew, but still now it is anonymous. But then because of the writing style, they say that because Luke, in the Gospel of Luke, he portrays Jesus' earthly ministry. In, gospel, uh, in the book of Acts, he portrays Jesus' ministry through his church. And the book of Hebrew talks about his high priestly ministry. So we are not sure, but then this is how the scholar suggest us maybe he could have been one of the author and some of them say that Paul could have also been one of the author but then we do not have any fact towards the author of the book of Hebrew but then it is a good message talks about the high priestly ministry of Jesus with that we also see the outline of the book of Luke I request you to please go through your notes to know more about the out, uh, outline of the book where the ministry of the son of man has been completed by the parables and many miracles that has been there. And also we see the rejection of the Son of Man in the book. And part four, the crucifixion and the resurrection of the Son of Man. And this is one of the book which includes the birth of Jesus and the ascension of Jesus. In this book, we also see the ministry of the Holy Spirit as a supplement in this book and also judging others and the emphasis on prayer has been clearly mentioned in the book so that we also know that if Jesus could emphasize and uh, pray, how much more you and I should uh, focus on having a prayerful life. So with that, uh, we conclude the Gospel of Luke and I keep this time open to add or share something on the Gospel of Luke. Class, it's open. So you can add or share something that you would like to share on this Gospel of Luke. Is there something new that we learned from this book? Other than we know that he was a doctor, he was a physician. Anything new that we learned or which refreshed our thoughts? Okay, any questions from this book?
I request you all to please go through uh, the notes so that we can have a clear understanding. Along with that, I request you to please read the Gospel of Luke to know the good news of Jesus Christ. So with that, we will end this session and we'll end this. Uh, we, we shall dismiss with a word of prayer. Can I request Zeli, if you can pray, please? And dismiss us. Okay, yes. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful session, Lord. We thank you for the gospel of Luke. Whatever we have learned, Lord, Holy Spirit will continue to minister to us and give us the input. And as we, Lord, go through the book of Luke, Lord, you speak to us. Hallelujah. Father, as we disperse from this place, Lord, I pray that Holy Spirit, you continue to guide us, lead us. You bless our pastor and also and bless each one of us, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you so much for joining in today's session. See you all tomorrow with the Gospel of John. Request you all to please go through the notes and the word. Thank you. God bless. See you all tomorrow. Thanks. <laughs>